He's right, it's magic. So am I. Hey everyone, He's there. I'm Jeff McCaw back with another Cinema Blend Roundtable debate because it has been five freaking years since the New Mutants began production. Yeah, five years. And it is finally coming to theaters, which that in itself is bonkers. The pre-sale started today. And I mean, at this point, you gotta ask the question, are we even excited about this movie anymore? You've been through a lot. It, it is. It has gone through so many changes. These these once promising young actors are now full grown freaking adults. <laughs> Let's start with uh, our events editor, Eric Eisenberg, who happens to have an interview with director Josh Boone today. So uh, uh, Eric, um, he's our resident, uh, you know, comic book uh, uh, specialist, as you can probably tell by his background. Do you know what mutants are? Bro, after all of these delays, after all of the nonsense, are you excited going into New Mutants? How do you feel about this? Well, I'll even throw onto my credentials the fact that it was actually three years ago, three years ago, mind you, uh, this month, that I actually was on the set of The New Mutants. I, I went oh to the God. Medford State Hospital, uh, which is a legitimately creepy place. Ooh, scary. So, uh, I got to interview the cast and uh, stars, and this is back when, uh, I, I, back when they were still making X-Men movies, so... One, five, one. Uh, you know, a lot has changed since then, and honestly, I, I, at the time, what I heard made me very excited to, to see what they were cooking up. However, you know, time has a bad effect on film in the film world. And like everything moves so fast constantly that when something isn't moving fast, it is hard to get excited about it. Because if something is good, there's usually a general policy that they want to, that if something is good, they want to put it out as quickly as possible so they can make money off of it. As you mentioned, it's been a minute since we've had like the like it, since this movie has actually been in a condition that could be released in theaters. So you know, I would love, love to love New Mutants, but it is hard to be tremendously excited anymore. So yeah, that that's where I'm coming from. Five five release dates this movie has had, and I mean right. a lot of this is due to you know a global pandemic and the Disney Fox merger. <laughs> But there's other things going on behind the scenes, like they were tonally trying to adjust things. There was uh, a alleged reshoots, and then it was like, no, it's recuts from principal photography, and the studio couldn't make up their mind about which direction to take. The whole thing seems just like a cluster. Disney apparently wasn't too fond of it, but a test screening went kind of well. I, I know, it's nonsense. It's nonsense. <laughs> like, Disney doesn't like, there's, like there's, dark. You gotta start talking, Sarcastic boy. There's so much going on behind the scenes. Um, uh, since he's uh, speaking up, I'm gonna uh, throw to uh, uh, writer, editor, Mike Reyes. Bro, how do you feel going into the theatrical release of New Mutants? Well, first of all, I'm just glad that Eric confirmed it's a real movie, considering everyone on the internet's like, <laughs> is New Mutants real? You're not alone. Not anymore. Was it filmed? I watched is them it a shoot it. Shelter? It's actually a thing. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that internet? Don't believe everything you read, except if it's from us. I am excited for New Mutants for a couple of reasons. First, it's just the sheer fact that it is a new movie that is coming out, uh, supposedly to theaters, but uh, I guess it's not coming to Jersey anytime soon because we just ruled that we're not opening theaters up yet. Sorry, Disney or, or 20th Century Studios. Hmm. But mm. I... Uh, <laughs> Good catch, bud. I am excited because even though the last couple X-Men proper movies did dim things to a certain extent, uh, Josh Boone is still someone that a lot of people talk about with a lot of promise, especially with uh, his adaptation of The Stand coming. And I know mm -hmm. a lot of people still love The Fault in Our Stars. Really? But also, you look at what Fox was able to do with Deadpool outside of that universe, and it feels like... Maybe if 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 the I mean, I can see right there, Mr. Pool live direct via satellite right there. Maximum effort. <laughs> but if if even with just the the cuffs off a little bit, they might be able to do something more than a Dark Phoenix. Are you sure about that? So far, we have Eric more on the pessimistic side. We have Mike that's kind of ah, I'm gonna give it a chance because I like X Men. So I'm gonna throw to our managing director Sean O'Connell, bro, going into the theatrical release of the New Mutants. 
How are you feeling? I'm really excited uh, for, for various reasons. I love these characters and um, I can't wait to see them realized on the big screen, even if it is in a weird sort of stunted experiment and that it can't really go anywhere. But I'm going to try my best not to hold the circumstances surrounding this poor film uh, against it and really judge it just for what I, you know Josh Boone is trying to put together and put out there. And it is when you go down the laundry list that you have already to this point, uh, discussing the number of things that have stacked up against this one film. It's it's like there's a, a funny joke about a guy who um, is stuck in a flood and all these people keep coming by to try to rescue him. And he says, no, God's going to help me. And and he, he, it right. keeps going, keeps going. He finally dies and he goes to heaven and he says to God, why didn't you help me? And God says, I sent you this boat and I sent you this helicopter. Like, why didn't you respond to them? <laughs> right. Like when New Mutants comes out and it goes horribly wrong, we're going to say, why, why do we let this happen? And God's going to say, I put a pandemic out there and I, <laughs> I, I made Disney and Fox merge themselves. We can get out of this. I'm fascinated in in a way that it's it's a movie that exists on a timeline that doesn't that isn't a thing anymore. So I'm curious to see how it fits into that storytelling. Um, it's it's a movie that can't build into anything. Um, I'm a little bit with Mike in that I'm excited to see a movie in a theater, and I hope that I can find some uh, safe theater nearby to be able to go and see it. I know you're scared, but you're safe now. But I love these characters. I'm excited to see Ileana. I'm excited to see Cannonball uh, realized for the first time in full power. And um, and Maisie Williams, who is a great actress and uh, is, you know, was taking this on to sort of distance herself from the Game of Thrones mythology at the time. Not today. I think that that's, that has to be by far the hottest take of this round table is that God gave us the pandemic to warn us about the new mutants. Stop new mutants from coming out. <laughs> that was so hot. The timing uh, is odd. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, timing's a little weird. I guess I kind of, I kind of know where this answer is going. But let me throw back to Eric for this question: uh, how, Are your feelings much different now than they were when the film was initially announced? Oh yeah, I mean, when, I, when it was officially announced, I was ten thousand percent on board. Like, I mean, like Sean said, I, I love these characters. These are fantastic characters. They absolutely deserve uh, the treatment on the big screen. Josh Boone, I think, is a really talented guy and has and clearly has demonstrated a passion for these characters. And I think that, I mean, and obviously, when the movie was announced, the X Men franchise also looked completely different. And I love the idea of maybe like New Mutants eventually, like the sequel would be X Force, which is what the team eventually turned into. And then obviously you have the Deadpool crossover. X-Force! X-Force. Yeah, there was so much brimming possibility. And then, but like over the course of time, things have happened that have obviously dimmed that potential. Like, and it was even while the film was in development. Like originally, uh, and this is something I even wrote about uh, from my set visit, is that New Mutants was originally supposed to be set in the 1980s. However, uh, when people didn't really respond to X-Men Apocalypse. <laughs> The studio decided, yeah, you know what? People don't seem to be into this period thing. Let's just move it up to the present. And that's why the movie is set in the present. Like, mm. stuff like that kind of tweaks me a little bit. I think it is important to note that uh, I think the first movie that everybody is, like, comparing and contrasting New Mutants to is Fantastic Four. What happened to me? The big X factor, no pun intended there, <laughs> is the fact that, like, there was all of the stuff about Josh Trank and the studio, like, doing, making active efforts to like distance themselves from him. Running away again. Meanwhile, Josh Boone has been with this film the entire run of the way. Uh, the, like you said, the reshoots never actually happened, but he's had control, like from what we know, has had control in the editing room uh, and has this, as this movie has changed and evolved to be what is going to be hitting theaters. So like, there isn't a reason to dismiss it out of hand as being a total disaster in that respect. However, like I said, there are reasons to be a little bit nervous about what it can do. But there are some elements that had me excited about this movie from the get-go that are still in place, which is they wanted to make um, mm -hmm. uh, an X-Men mutants movie that had horror elements to it. And I don't think they're going to go full bore R-rated horror like some people thought that they may, but I'm really intrigued to see how Josh Boone sort of plays off that. I know one of the reference points that they made, I think, Eric, they probably talked about this on the set, is the Nightmare on Elm Street series and the Dream Warriors yes. part Dream three Warriors in particular. Yep. Yeah. Oh, what a rush! 
So I, I really want to see how that plays out. And and kind of with the trailers as they've evolved and we've seen more and more recent ones, the powers on display seem cooler and cooler. And it makes me think that, that they took the time to improve those special effects, especially stuff with Ileana and being able to see into Limbo. Um, that looks really cool. And they've been hiding the demon bear, which is the, the villain, quote unquote, mm -hmm. of this piece. And I'm excited to see how that plays out. So there's still plenty of elements that have me really intrigued about how this is going to screen. Yeah, but but those elements uh, have been then dropped and then uh, readapted, right? It's It's been this whole ridiculous process. Uh, apparently, the studio wanted to soften the tone and then the trailer was released and people were stoked on the horror aspect. So they took a step back and they're like, oh, never mind, let's do the horror <laughs> aspect, right? I, I, have we we heard about this. They, they yeah, they, they can't seem to make up their mind as to what they're going for tonally. That's my biggest concern, really, is that if they're doing, you know, all these recuts. Let me uh, let me throw to uh, Mike Reyes because if you've read this guy's interviews, he he marches to the beat of his own drum sometimes with his opinions. Like he's not afraid to give a B movie four and a half stars. You know what I mean? So so oh, I want to yeah. I want to ask. I love Alien Covenant. Wanna... Have you ever experienced anything you'd consider abnormal? Um, uh, Mike, Disney, uh, apparently wasn't a fan of, uh, the New Mutants. And then the New Mutants did a test screening, and that test screening went pretty damn well. Um, do these, uh, do these early reactions concern you, or do you put any stake in them at all? I, they only concern me as so much as I remember Batman vs. Superman had a really big test screening, apparently. And, uh, I think Suicide Squad did too. And uh, to Sean's point, I'm just hearing the re sort of recalling the, the change in trailers for New Mutants. That's sort of a reverse of what happened with Suicide Squad, where that's sort of you could tell that had a lot of different hands on it as it turned as the it gradually got lighter. Literally, the color palette went lighter on that movie. I know how the world works. OK, you know, audiences will are more predisposed to like a movie sometimes when you don't have to pay for it. And it's just kind of put in front of you and it's a big surprise. And so it, it, I'm kind of on the fence with that. Well, let's, well, let's talk about that idea. I mean, it's, it's a big return to the movies. Like uh, we wrote a couple articles about it. Like we're kind of shocked. Like, wait, are, are they really releasing this thing in theaters? Like, have they heard? There's something yeah. going on right now. <laughs> Think, know, strange so things I, are afoot. Well, and especially yeah. when Disney lets something like Mulan go to Disney Plus, which is supposed to be a huge, yeah. a big ticket feature for them. Insult me again, you'll taste the tip of my blade. And I mean, I will also say just as kind of a concern about it also is that like, mm. if the movie doesn't do well in theaters, there's a very simple explanation for why that happened. That's an easy loss to write off. Oh, for yeah. If Aliens. you don't like if you don't have a ton of confidence in it, confidence in it anyway. So. Sure, but it's funny. Yeah. It's almost like the opposite is, is a little bit happening. And the only uh, test case that we have for this right now is oddly enough in Unhinged, the Russell Crowe film. And uh, in yeah. talking to the people who were behind that movie, they were saying that it's it's been interesting to watch it go internationally because normally you get a big pop opening weekend and then you gradually decline. They have you know started soft and audience word of mouth or just more people feeling confident going back to the theaters, giving it a try has allowed it to sort of gradually build so that when they're at like $8 million in box office sales and they're celebrating that. No, it's not what I want, it's what I need. Like you, you're probably right, Eric, that if New Mutants gets itself to like five yeah. or six million dollars, they might be pumping their fists and saying, "We got something." <laughs> and, <laughs> and I mean, and it's it's worth those, it, like it should be noted also. Like I'm sure that co there have been costs of like just even from the pushing release dates, like the marketing costs and stuff like that. But sure. it is worth noting also that this movie didn't start. This isn't a big budget, big budget blockbuster. Like this mm -hmm, isn't a right. movie that like started with a huge cost on it anyway. And obviously all of that cost even kind of got swallowed up in the entire Disney Fox deal anyway. <laughs> So like, what does that money actually matter? It's so hard to even say, and especially because again, the X-Men franchise technically came to an end with Dark Phoenix, and now it's not part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So there's that whole kind of push and pull. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like the situation seems to be as prime for its release as anything, I guess. So from what you saw on the set, Eric, was the characterizations pretty accurate? Like, do you think that they understand the characters and they're getting it? I saw something. 
I don't think she wanted me to see. Oh, very much so. Yeah. And then like, and they even got and like, and just the aesthetic that they, like you mentioned the Dream Warriors thing. That's where I first heard that. And honestly, that immediately made me excited because I always felt that uh, Dream Warriors is like the ultimate horror idea that was just never fully realized to its potential. Like that movie sets up something so cool and then it just goes nowhere, which sucks. That's totally a different tangent for a different video. <laughs> However, um, but I mean, but I, I, I definitely like they and just from the, even from the trailers. I mean, like we just saw earlier today, the footage launch of like what Cannonball looks like when he's bouncing all around. Looks really neat. Ileana uh, with her like soul sword and and going through uh, the teleportation through limbo looks awesome. Like I, I, I do think that they very much captured just who these characters are and even frankly just using dr cecilia reyes as the doctor who's keeping them in while also having the, the mutant, mutant power to project force fields this isn't a hospital it's a cage that's a good application of that character so you know i do like and, and like and i to repeat the point is that i think josh boone really does have an, a deep affection for these characters mm -hmm. i don't think there was ever any bad intention going into this it's just it's really everything just about the circumstances of its release that has given me pause just go, again, going back yeah. to my original point. I also just think it's really hard to speculate on um, feedback of how things play or don't play at the studio level. I, I know Eric and I can point to far too many examples of early buzz from studio folk telling us that something was going to be either really great or terrible and the exact oh, yeah. opposite ends up happening. Million Dollar Arm, starring John Hamm, was apparently one of the best <laughs> testing movies in Disney history. They announced wow. that at CinemaCon, it blew my mind, and that's the first time you've heard about that movie in how many years? So, point made. It's impossible. Uh, Is that on Disney Plus? I forgot about that movie, dude. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm IMDb'ing it right now, because, oh man. Uh, and there are, there are blockbusters, blockbuster films that we've been told by studios like, yeah, I think we just missed the mark on this one. And then what's the most egregious? Well, I'm not going to reveal it. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, <laughs> I'll tell you in Slack chat. Um, but then you watch it and you're like, this back. is great. <laughs> this is really fun. So, uh, yeah, I won't trust necessarily the early buzz on, on whatever the tonal shift is of a film like this until you see it play out. All right, well, I'm, I'm gonna get some closing thoughts here. I gotta be honest, uh, during the course of this conversation, I, I came into it a little bit indifferent, but now like hearing y'all's opinions and kind of talking about the film, now I'm kind of excited. So uh, let's let's go back to Eric. Eric, uh, you, you were, um, I know that you had mixed feelings, but you're the pessimist of this conversation. So uh, after having, the, having it out, having this conversation, have your feelings changed at all? I don't think we're here to get better. You know, I mean, I, I will say, I, 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 I think Mike and Sean have made some really good points. And I mean, my curiosity has never dissipated. It's just been my anticipation that has changed. And if this movie, again, is great, I'm all for it. That'd make me very, very happy. However, if it's bad, I'm also like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and, then, and then you can say, I, then you can still say I told you so. Um, uh, all right, Mike, you were kind of so-so on it. Uh, do you still feel that way, or has this inspired some excitement in you? I'm a little more excited just hearing the stories of how jo uh, Josh Boone sort of got his vision back and just the, the various, you know, seeing two Died in the Wolf fans of X-Men sort of going off about this kind of has me a little more excited, you know, and then I just discovered X-Men itself is on Disney Plus this morning, so... We might have mutant fever again, and if it's if it's the good type, I'll be so glad. But if it's not, then maybe I'll pay for Mulan. Sean, you feel the same way? You still ready to go back to the theater? Oh, I'm ready to go back to the theater. You're not going anywhere. And and believe me, I fully expect New Mutants to be perfectly fine. Like I don't think it's going to be a, a top ten movie of the year by any stretch. But I also don't think it's going to be nearly as bad as the circumstances have made it out to be. And we're in a mm. drought, like we're in a serious drought, not just for movies, but Mar like I haven't seen a Marvel movie in God knows how long. I've started panicking. A, a new one. And while this isn't MCU by any stretch, I'm going to pretend that it is. And I'm going to enjoy not see Project Power last weekend. Uh, that mm. was not a Marvel movie by any stretch, Mike. <laughs> Depends on which stretch. one you're comparing it to. No, it's something else. Yes, <laughs> just because it had Electro in it doesn't mean that it's a Marvel movie. <laughs> All, all right, everyone, the, uh, the, the pre-sale for New Mutants started today. You can see the film in freaking theaters, that sounds so weird to say, on, yeah. on August 27th, so check that out. 
Who do you agree with? Are you excited about the release of the film? Are you worried about it? Do you think it's just gonna suck? Let us know in the comments below. Uh, Mike Reyes, Sean O'Connell, Eric Eisenberg, thank you for joining me, guys.